What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 biggest generation versus generation matches in WWE history. It is always cool to see a wrestler that can still somewhat go in the ring go against a current wrestler and they create a great feud great robbery and ultimately a great match um i think the one a lot of us can obviously think of is john cena versus the rock it's probably one of the biggest generation versus generation matches or the rock versus hulk hogan you know two people in separate eras of wrestling going at it Fan, it's like a, a dream match for fans so that's some of the noticeable ones i can instantly think of off the top of my head but we're gonna check out some of these uh um generation versus generation matches appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel if there is one thing sports fans love, it is fantasizing about the best athletes of this era taking on the superstars of the past. Mm -hmm. In football, fans dream about Messi taking on Pele. In basketball, mouths water at the prospect of Michael Jordan versus Ennis Cantor. And in chess, what could be more exciting? I don't know about that comparison. I, I, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. That last one. I think people, Michael Jordan and, Co uh, not Kobe, uh, Michael Jordan and LeBron. That's, that, that's probably the only comparison anyone ever talks about. So no disrespect to the other guy, but it's, come on. Exciting than thinking about the Titanic clash between Ruben Fine and Andre Esepenko. What, no chess fans out there? Mm. Philistines. The thing about WWE is that these intergenerational matches aren't just possible, they happen on the regular. It is woven into the fabric of the business that an older veteran puts over a younger performer mm -hmm. on their way, which has led to plenty of amazing spectacles over the years. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 biggest generation versus generation matches in WWE history. Join us. Number 10, Vince McMahon versus Shane McMahon. Mm. In terms of intergenerational matches, this one fits the bill quite literally, as it involves a father beating the ever-loving Scott <laughs> out of his own son. Technically. The street fight between Vince McMahon and his son Shane from WrestleMania X7 is now the stuff of wrestling legend. After tormenting his family by I drugging his wife Linda this. and taking on <laughs> Trish Stratus as a mistress, Vinnie Mac finally got his comeuppance during this absolutely wild fight. There were chair shots, elbow drops, slaps, uh -huh. Mick Foley, and perhaps the greatest WrestleMania moment of all time. Linda McMahon slowly rising from her chair to yep. kick her no-good husband square in the nuts. You think I'm kidding? I'm not. The charisma void that is Linda McMahon got a goddamn road warrior pop here. Facts. In the end, Shane got the win over his old man and put his fiendish plot to rest. I mean, yeah, Vince might have ended up standing tall at the end of the yeah. night with the new WWE champion Stone Cold Steve Austin, but there was a good hour or so where we thought he had finally hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. The McMahon family soap opera might be responsible for some of the worst content in all of WWE, but when done right, it delivered absolute gold. Number nine, Kevin Owens versus Stone Cold That's Steve Austin. That's a real when good rumors one. began to circulate at the beginning of 2022 that Stone Cold Steve Austin might be in a match at the upcoming WrestleMania 38, many fans quickly dismissed them. Mm -hmm. Austin hadn't had a match in nearly 20 years. He was getting on in years and had a famously knackered, well, everything. Surely a comeback was off the cards. Well, if 2022 proved one thing, yeah. it's that anything can happen in the world of pro wrestling. It was announced that Stone Cold would be a guest on a WrestleMania edition of the KO Show, hosted by Kevin Owens. However, Owens revealed that this was all a ruse to lure Austin to the ring, and the match was on. Against all the odds, a 57-year-old Austin so put fun, on a bro. stonker of a performance, hanging with one of the best wrestlers of so the current crop. He ended up beating Owens with, well, what else, a Stone Cold Stunner. Owens has drawn many comparisons to the Texas Rattlesnake over his career. Both are brawlers with a ferocious attitude and a sharp mm -hmm. tongue, with Owens even adopting the stunner as a finisher in recent years. Mm -hmm. Seeing the two square off was a dream come true for many and a perfect return for one of the all-time greats. 
Number eight, Jimmy match. Snooker versus The Undertaker at very, WrestleMania very 7. Match. With the power of hindsight, the most important match on the card for WrestleMania 7 was a 4 minutes and 20 second long undercard encounter. Damn. Jimmy Superfly Snooker's prime years for WWE were in the early to mid 1980s, where he famously jumped off a steel cage onto Don Morocco at Madison Square Garden. He's also famous for some other stuff, but we're not yeah. going to get into that right now because it'll drag down the tone of the entire video. Yeah, 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 By yeah. the time Mania 7 rolled, around, Snooker was 47 years old, the wrestling equivalent of 101 at the time. Pretty Meanwhile, much. his opponent, The Undertaker, turned 26 on the day of wow. the show itself. His birthday present was a victory over Snooker that kickstarted one of the most important parts of his wrestling legacy. Undertaker would go unbeaten at WrestleMania for the next 23 years, with the streak becoming a reason to buy the show of shows all uh -huh. by itself. Having the young Taker go over a legend like Snooker in his very first WrestleMania match helped set him up for big things in the company that year. However, few could have predicted just how monumental this match would seem in the decades that followed. Number That's 7, crazy. Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan. Oh. Hulk this Hogan one. was the guy in WWE for almost the entire 1980s oh, and early part of the 1990s. That mantle would eventually find its way to Shawn Michaels, who led the company as one of its biggest stars for a few years in the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. So when it was announced that these two legends would meet in the main event of SummerSlam 2005, fans from across the ages were delighted. Oh, how little they knew. Yeah. This match is famous, or should that be infamous, for Shawn's ludicrous oversight of Hogan's <laughs> offense. The Heartbreak Kid flopped around for the Hulkster like he was a puppet on a string, making the bout unintentionally hilarious as a result. The reason for this ridiculous <laughs> professionalism was that Hogan had apparently reneged on his promise to give HBK his win back in a mooted rematch. When he realized that this match was a one-time deal and that he was doing the J-O-B, Michaels decided to make Hogan's life a living hell while they shared the squared circle. In all fairness, how good good would a match between these two have actually been in 2005. The showstopper's hissy fit actually made the match so much more entertaining Facts. and ensured that it lives on in the minds of wrestling fans to this very day. Bro, it's one of my favorite SummerSlam matches of all time only because Sean just said, fuck it, all right, cool. You don't want to... You don't want to do the job at a later time. Screw it. This is going to be our one and only match. I'm about to just... I'm about to be an ass. And that shit was fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> Number six, Trish Stratus versus Charlotte Flair. There aren't many bigger names in the world of women's wrestling than Trish Stratus, which is ironic because she's only five foot five. Initially used as nothing more than a bit of eye candy, Trish mm -hmm. evolved in front of us to become one of the most competent performers of the Attitude Era. She did. For context, being a good wrestler and a woman in this period was about as useful yeah. to your career as being a master of origami. Fact. WWE took any chance they could get to promote how great Stratus was and made her the poster girl for their women's division as well as the standard for future performers to strive for. Well, that was until a shiny new toy arrived in the company. Mm -hmm. Charlotte Flair has been held on a similarly high pedestal since she made her main roster debut in 2015. Yep. Being the daughter of Ric Flair certainly didn't hurt, but Charlotte has defined her own legacy with a slew of excellent matches. She definitely Promos, does have some great not matches. so much, but matches for sure. <laughs> for sure. The two met in the her matches are, you know, when she's in a ring with a, a good opponent, she can put on some gems. The promos, eh. But outside of that, no, she can she can definitely go in the ring. Ring at SummerSlam 2019 with the younger generation going over. It was a more than stratifying match that served as a reminder of just how far women's wrestling had come since Trish's heyday. Mm -hmm. Number five, Randy Orton versus Cactus Jack. This was a good as one well too. As well as being one of the biggest draws of the Attitude Era, Mick Foley also made a star out of Triple H at the Royal Rumble in 2000 mm -hmm. and helped solidify Edge as a main event player with their battle at WrestleMania 22. Two. In too. between those two matches, he helped a young apex predator find his feet and RKO whatever ceiling was hovering above his head. 
23-year-old Randy Orton made it his personal mission to torment poor Mick in late 2003 slash early 2004. Great, legend killer. He kicked Foley down some stairs, which led to Mick taking Randy out mm -hmm. of the Royal Rumble, which led to the Rock and Sock Connection reforming to take on Evolution at WrestleMania 20. After all that, the feud was basically put to bed at Backlash 2004. Except that bed was full of barbed oh wire and thumbtacks. A semi-retired so Foley performing as Cactus Jack challenged Orton for the Intercontinental Championship in a hardcore match. This was Cactus Jack's speciality match, but uh -huh. the legend killer was able to overcome the legend, how apt, and emerge on the other side of this brutal encounter, a made man. Number four. We gotta give Mick Foley his flowers too. The dude stayed putting over people. He put over Edge. He definitely put over Triple H. He put over obviously the Undertaker. <laughs> and then he put over Randy Orton as well. That bro, you gotta give him props. He will make you look like a billion bucks. And he'll make you he'll make believers out of you. Like he'll make some fans be like, damn, I ain't know Edge could get that, get that intense. I ain't know Randy Orton could take that much pain. That's how good he is, man. Gotta give him his flowers. Or Triple H versus Batista. Sticking with Evolution members now, as two former components of the Great, great Stable view. found themselves great, face to great, face great in the main event of WrestleMania. After a fantastically executed slow burn face turn, Batista so finally good. turned on Triple H and Ric Flair by giving his old pals the thumbs down on an episode of Raw. Batista had just won the Royal Rumble and shockingly cashed in his shot for Tripper's World Heavyweight Championship at the biggest event of the year. And WrestleMania 21 was the night of young emerging talent. Mm -hmm. Randy Orton put on a great performance against The Undertaker, John Cena beats JBL to become WWE Champion, yep. and The Animal closed out the night by taking down the Cerebral Assassin to become World Champion for the very first time. It's a bit of a shame that the match itself left a lot to be desired, but yeah. let's not dwell on that right now. While Cena beating JBL might have had larger ramifications for wrestling going forward, the story between Hunter and Dave's match is what puts it on this list. Yeah. Evolution was the past, present, and future all coming together. And now the future was the present, which is pretty damn poetic if you ask me. <laughs> Number three, Brock Lesnar versus The Rock. Get ready uh, to hear the words The Rock over and over again. I know Dub does not like this one. <laughs> he would not he like this up one. in every entry from now until the end of the list. SummerSlam 2002 is considered by many to be the greatest incarnation of the show. Kurt Angle defeated Rey Mysterio in a blistering opener, Shawn Michaels made his in-ring return, and who could mm -hmm. forget the all-time classic that was Spike Dudley versus Steven Richards on the pre-show. I certainly won't, and you can't make me. The show ended with The Rock defending his undisputed WWE Championship against the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. The Beast had debuted for the company just five months earlier and was already facing one of its biggest mm -hmm. stars for the top prize. After a great back and forth encounter, Brock pinned Rock with an F5 to become the youngest world champion in WWE history at the time. This match made perfect sense. Rock was stepping away from yep. wrestling full time to take on Tinseltown, while Brock was the next big thing. Number two, The Rock versus John Ooh, Cena. Be on there. Has After to be conquering on there. the world of Hollywood, Rocky made his live return to Monday Night Raw for the first time in over seven years in February of 2011. This was seemingly to set him up as the guest host for WrestleMania 27, but in reality, it was actually sowing the seeds for the following year's event. Yeah. Following the all-time great closer between The Miz and John Cena, <laughs> Not all that was sarcasm, great. by the way, great Rock close. got into it with <laughs> Cena on Raw. The great one had basically cost Cena the WWE Championship in the battle, and now Big Match John wanted revenge. This set up the next year's WrestleMania main mm -hmm. event, The Rock versus John Cena. Cena, the Attitude Era versus the PG Era, Loud and Rowdy versus Squeaky Clean, Black Adam versus Ferdinand the Bull. This was absolutely <laughs> huge. After 12 months of build that was actually three months of build spread out over a year, the two icons came face to face. 
In the end, the past killed the present when Rock beat Cena with a rock bottom, mm -hmm. giving fans a scene that truly lived up to the tagline, once in a lifetime. It wasn't. Again, <laughs> that was sarcasm. <laughs> Number one, The Rock versus Hulk oh, Hogan. Dude, that was gonna be there. He put over the future, tangled with the biggest star of the modern age, and now the time has come to talk about Rock it. versus the ghost of wrestling past. After nine years trying to become a movie star and getting good use out of Ted Turner's checkbook, Hulk Hogan made his return to the company he helped build when he came back to WWE at No Way Out 2002. Mm -hmm. Almost immediately, he was inserted into a feud with one of his successors as Hogan vs. The Rock was booked for the upcoming WrestleMania 18. While some fans wanted Hogan to take on Steve Austin at the yeah. event, it could be argued that Rock was actually a better pick. Rock was perhaps more of a showman than Austin, maybe better able to match Hogan's ability to control a crowd. And the decision paid off with yeah. one of the greatest wrestling spectacles of all time. Goosebump Although inducing. he was the heel, the Toronto crowd overwhelmingly cheered the Hulkstar. This completely flipped the match's dynamic on its uh -huh. head as the fans ravenously ate up everything Hogan did. A match made solely on star power, Rock vs. Hogan at WrestleMania remains one of the best viewing experiences a wrestling fan can get, this side of Spike Dudley vs. Steven Richards. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> nah, big facts, man. That that match was it's 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 gonna go down in history as one of those matches you just watch and you just enjoy the entire atmosphere. Hulk Hogan was supposed to be a heel, The Rock was supposed to be the face, and then they pretty much kind of did a double turn. They had to because the the crowd was just so pro Hogan. It was just just a lightning in the bottle, if if I can use an analogy. It was fantastic. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite generation versus generation match of all time. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150k, and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world and your inner clutch world heavyweight champion. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.